Greetings! In today's video, I have a new Timu haul for you guys. I was able to find a bunch of new items on there that I thought were really interesting. And also I have a bit of a fun story about this particular parcel, but I'll elaborate when we get there. I have a special code for you guys and you can get some really cool stuff depending on if you're a first time customer or a returning customer. I'll have a bit more detail about that at the end of the video and in the description. First item out of the bag is this book. This is a sketchbook. It's an organ book, meaning that it's basically a concertina book. You know, the ones that have one big sheet of paper that is folded. Let's take a look inside. So the most interesting feature of this one is, of course, that it contains Paohong paper, which is a really nice cotton paper. So, yeah, I don't know if you can see, but it's... All the pages are connected. It's one very long page. So the first thing I'm kind of noticing is that the edges here are sticky. You, the top cover doesn't have that issue, but the edges are kind of sticky. I don't know why, I'll have to investigate. I was interested in testing out this book, or this style of book, because I saw artist Holly Exley do something really interesting with a small concertina book. I'll try to find a link to her video or post talking about it and I'll put that in the description but I think these can make for really interesting travel logs because everything is connected together so it's a bit like the the trip being contained into this sequence of days or pages. Next item keeps with the idea of the first item. This time it's a regular sketchbook of watercolor paper from Bahong. So this is a beautiful fabric or cloth cover sketchbook. The company brand is embossed in a chrome rainbow gradient kind of stamp here. Comes with an elastic. The paper looks different from the concertina book or the accordion book we just looked at. No pockets at the back of it. Quite a good number of pages. Let's take a look at the signatures. So they kind of have that issue of signature that they become a bit unglued, but they seem to be sewn together too. So I'm hopeful that uh, this book will keep its shape, even if used and manhandled a bit. Third item is another watercolor sketchbook. Why do I focus so much on watercolor sketchbooks? Well, it's because I, I mainly use that to practice and to paint. So I always appreciate having a good pile of backups. Also, I oftentimes will use two sketchbooks at the same time because you can work in one while the other is drying or, you know, the other way around. So this one is a watercolor handbook, 300 GSM, 24 sheets watercolor. No details about the type of paper on this one. Well, the first page is, is not watercolor paper, but the texture is quite smooth. Following pages are much more textured in this, you know, regular pattern that we see a lot for cellulose paper. The sheets are perforated. The texture is very similar from one page to the other, front or back of the paper. This one has a pocket and a cloth ribbon. smells a tiny bit of glue. When the paper is perhaps more textured or something like that, and depending on if it's cellulose or cotton, but it's interesting to have a bit of both types of sketchbooks because gouache works really well on cellulose paper and it's oftentimes more affordable than cotton paper, so you can save up a bit there. Next I have, I'll take these two at the same time because they're quite similar in concept. This one is, I think it's Bahong still, but these are a set of pre-cut watercolor postcards. So 300 GSM, cold press. I quite like the idea of having papers that are ready for postcard. I like that it's all printed in the back. Quite a lovely cold press texture in the front. The only thing that I would personally like to do with this kind of thing is to round the corners a bit so they don't get um, clipped too much in transit, but that's really just a personal preference. The back looks nice. I haven't sent a postcard in a long time, so I don't remember what is everything for, but these look really lovely. They came in a very minimal packaging, which is fine by me. 
that's perfect. And also this here, this is the same idea basically, but not postcards, just regular watercolor paper. So what it says that it's 100% cotton, cold press paper, 300 GSM. Now these papers, as you can see, there's a quite a strong texture on this side. I'll have to try it out, but I think I almost prefer the back side of this paper. The texture is less repetitive and I think it looks really good. Or perhaps I just, you know, picked up the pile of paper the wrong side. <laughs> and this is the side that's meant to be used. But either way, whether you like a more textured side to your paper or a slightly less textured side, this is uh, really nice. The final paper item I have for this particular haul is this impressive stack of watercolor paper from Potentate. They're the same brand as the bag of large paper sheets. So if I remember correctly, this is meant to be 80 sheets of 300 GSM paper, 100% cotton. It's quite a substantial stack. And interestingly, this is a pad. <laughs> it's glued here. It's the thickest pad I've ever seen. So yeah, basically a good amount of pages that are glued. So it's from Potentate. So the paper seems to be really similar as the one we checked before. So quite a noticeable texture on this side. But if you look at the back side of the paper, the texture is much smoother. So I'll have to try it out. That's, that's the one thing I want to try with this paper mainly is to see if both sides can be used and that would allow for so much versatility in what you want to paint with a stack of paper like this. This is a really fun size to practice, to make smaller paintings, and I really like that it's this really thick pad of paper. There's a couple of things that I got with this haul that I would consider somewhat odds and ends. Still art related because that's the whole point, but not painting related per se. But I was interested to see this uh, calligraphy dip pen set. It comes with nine nibs and to be fair with you guys, some of these look to be in not so great shape. I might have to tinker, like this one looks really flat. I don't think it's supposed to be this flat, you know, <laughs> but a lot of them look decent enough and I'm, I mean, I'm eager to try them. This was really affordable and I'm curious to see the nib holder too, because I'm still kind of on a quest for the perfect nib holder and I don't really know what to look for. So being able to try a different one here is a really interesting prospect. Of course the packaging is a bit banged up. That's not really an issue because it's not like I'm going to keep it. On the back you have some info about the set and tips and hints on how to use and some how to care for your nibs, which is, you know, more than I can say for all the other nib set I've bought before. I think most of them came with no info whatsoever. So in this, in this sense, this is much appreciated, but yeah, again, I'll look into this in detail in a future video. So next item, I want to put these three together. These were three separate items, but they're very similar in concept. In one of my previous hauls, I got one of these little sets of shimmery colors. So I tried one of these sets before and I really love the paints. Enough that I sought to acquire more of these. The packaging is quite decent. They have this piece of protective foam in each of the little sets, which is much appreciated because as you can see, some bits kind of came off, but they don't look the worst for wear. So I got these three. I I think there might be some color overlap, a tiny bit. Like this color looks really similar to this one. Aside from that though, this seems to be really nice. I'm excited to try these. I swatched the previous set I got and I was really impressed with how good they looked. Then in the same idea, I'll go through these two together because they're very similar in concept, but first I'll open these up. This is what was in those two packages. So as you can see, very similar sets. What changes between the two is the paints. 
So in this one, it's the 12 Ocean and Forest Colors. And in this one, it's uh, what they call the Skin Watercolor Set, but it's mostly like Earth Tones and more neutral colors. Both sets come with the same travel brush, a size 2. Oh, wow. Okay. It seems to be like one of those fake squirrel type of brush. I don't know if you can see, but they came protected in, in the tube, which is not something I've seen before. It's going to be difficult to put it back in, so I'm just going to keep it like this. And then each set comes with a sketchbook. So it has a rubber band, it has a sleeve on it. I think it's very similar to this CME or a CME art sketchbook I looked at in a previous haul. Perforated paper, has a ribbon, has a pocket. The paper seems quite heavily textured, but so quite nice. This one has a bit of a stain on it. Oops. It happens. But yeah. What I was really curious about mainly was the paints. Because you know what? These two sets, they remind me of other theme sets I've seen from other brands before. And I wanted to be able to see if these were the same, different, like how they compare to other paints I've tried. It comes in a metal tin that is, I mean, probably quite familiar for all of us. It's a nicely finished tin with the rounded edges. It has a swatch card that seems to be on cotton paper, or at least, you know, quite decent watercolor paper in a um, color that looks to be like natural white. Uh, Okay, so the tray in here is a bit unhooked from its, its, its peg. The pans are unwrapped, which I can appreciate because, you know, it's, <laughs> it's time consuming to unwrap everything. I don't think they are labeled though, so figuring out which color is which could be a bit complex. I'm thinking that perhaps this goes like, yeah, that would make sense. So according to the chart, if the colors haven't moved, this would be the order of them. It's going to be easier to see after swatching the colors. But yeah, so far I am not disappointed in the presentation of things. Now let's take a look at the other set. Again, same thin rounded edges. Oh, this one also has a a tray loose, but that's okay. It's, it's not really a big issue for me anyway. I love how these paints look. They look quite smooth. Uh, in presentation, they remind me a bit of how when you when you get Cutman paints, new Cutman paints, like the smoothness of them. But yeah, I'll have to uh, switch these to now. Again, I don't think these are labeled, but uh, let's see. Okay, so this is probably how this goes. The black, yellow, ochre, van der Graam, cinnamon, flesh pink and gold at the bottom caramel dark brown redwood burnt ochre raw ochre raw umber not sure about the color names and my expectations of what the colors are going to be we'll see when i swatch these as well now as far as i can tell these were the only two sets i was able to find from simi art they didn't have a set with more traditional colors in it like the regular yellow, red, blue, green, earth tones, black and white kind of deal we we see everywhere. Those were the only two sets available. I'm not mad at it because I have a lot of basic sets already and these being themed is possibly an advantage in their favor. It's going to be interesting to see what limitations these color selections have and also is there a possibility that you can work the two of them together or is it just going to be weird? And finally, the last two items of this set and why I said in the beginning that there was a bit of a story with this specific order and package. The way I received this package is we got out of 
the building and I spotted a bit of orange on a balcony and I was like, oh, oh, it's a parcel. It has happened in the past that delivery people will leave parcels on the balcony. But I think what was particularly striking with this one is that the parcel wouldn't fit through the balcony's railing. So the parcel had to be thrown with a decent amount of force, I guess, over the balcony and landed on the balcony. So while we were able to retrieve the package without throwing it anywhere, the damage had already been done. If any breakables in there had to suffer, well, too late. So I was a bit nervous when I opened this bag because for this one, I'm gonna try getting a f just a few fragile items to see how they fare in transit. And of course, this had to be the package that got thrown six feet in the air and landed on a hard balcony. This item that I'm going to show you now came into this bag and it was rolled over like this. So it had a significant number of protective layers on top of it. But it's this really cute and sort of dainty little inkwell. It's definitely meant to be used as an inkwell because it's so thick on the bottom. So I think that's meant to help with tipping. Like it's, it's going to be hard to tip it over. You really have to you know, knock it, bam. But if you just dip your pen in it, it's going to be a bit harder to dip. And it came with this little cover, which is more of a cover than a lid really, because I think the intent is to protect it from uh, dust. It has a cute little handle, so it's not covered in fingerprints. And it survived being thrown on the balcony, <laughs> which I was really uh, relieved to see. And then this item is the one I'm kind of stressed about. But if I remember right, this is this is rather fragile <laughs> and shouldn't be tossed six feet anywhere. Okay, first, already good, good foam, good sturdy foam packaging. I'm hopeful. Let's try and. Like this out. I don't see any bits or dust in the box, so still hopeful, right? Oh! Oh, I think it survived! Oh, oh my gosh, yay! I got this uh, to use as a small palette. It's a beautiful little rectangular ceramic dish. Seems to be really nicely made. It has this little bump on the bottom to provide it with a bit more st stability because it's so long. And it looks to be in excellent shape. I'm not seeing any cracks on it. I'm not seeing any breaks or chips. It, survi <laughs> it survived the Great Balcony Toss of 2024, which I'm incredibly grateful for, really. I was looking forward to seeing this little thing. I wasn't sure exactly how it would look, if it was going to be useful or not. I don't know. And I gotta say, I'm really happy with it. So that's it for this specific haul. I want to go through all of this stuff and have more in-depth reviews and swatches and, you know, experiment with the papers and paints and everything. What I'm thinking of doing is to group things by brand. Like, I have quite a few items from Potentate by now, so I might do a, like, a video where I test all of the Potentate papers together, or I think I, have, I might have brushes from them too, or, you know, that kind of stuff, like these two sets together, and all the sparkly paints together. I feel like it's gonna be more interesting to have these contained within a video with multiple elements so that you have a reference point. Does that make sense? So let me know what you think of this idea in the comments. And also I wanna thank Timu for sending me these items. You can download the Timu app via the link in the description and make sure to use the code also in the description to get your coupon bundle or your extra discount off. It really makes a difference. If you are a new user, you can get an extra 90% off your purchases, which is how you can get these really awesome prices. And also for all users, you get a $100 coupon bundle, which definitely helps. Thank you for watching. Have a lovely day. Bye bye.